All right, chapter two, examining body image and eating disorders. This is chapter two out of the Walters textbook. Uh, we're gonna go over body image, uh, weight dissatisfaction, preoccupation, uh, eating disorders, types of eating disorders, uh, what the causes are, the risks, and treatment strategies for those eating disorders. Now, Heather was a straight A student in high school. Uh, she was a member of the swim team, concert band, and was active in her church. She had a large group of friends, always had a boyfriend, uh, but she never felt pretty or thin. By her senior year, life was so intense at home that she was looking forward to going away to college where she could be more independent and, and find out who she was. She was confident that she would do well because she was a good student in high school. However, things did not go as planned. She spent more time on her social life than on her schoolwork. She ended up flunking out of college. Heather gained a few extra pounds and did not know that she was slipping into a deep depression. She felt hopeless and thought that returning to college was never gonna be an option. She continued that down, downhill spiral and she decided to take back her life. She began exercising and eventually she was able to take control of her emotional state. She was disciplined and brought structure back into her life. Heather began to drop the weight and begun, had begun receiving compliments from her family and friends and how good she was looking, but it did not help how she felt inside. She exercised more. She began to feel worse inside. She began sleeping a lot more and lost motivation for life. She tried college again. She still felt ugly, stupid, of no use to society. She thought that the second chance at a higher education was going to work. She, con she continued her strict regimen of diet and exercise. On the outside, it looked as if she was in control, but on the inside, she was a complete disaster. She was consumed with what she would eat and how much she would need to exercise. She missed class because she, her sleeping patterns were upside down and she would sleep all day and be up all night. All that she could think about was the food that she would eat and found it harder to get motivated to get out of bed in the morning. She confided in one of her RAs. She reached out for help. The RA suggested that maybe Heather had an eating disorder, but how could she have an eating disorder if she was still eating? Heather searched the internet for information on eating disorders. She was shocked to find that every symptom that she was experiencing was that of anorexia nervosa. Heather was able to get help from her doctor and eventually started visiting a psychologist for therapy. Gradually and patiently, she was able to rebuild her life. She took back control. She realized that it doesn't matter what society dictates, such as people, how they live, uh, who they need to be, what they eat, what to buy, what to what they wear, how they love. But the most important thing that she learned as a Christian is that she could depend on God for support and unconditional love. Heather learned to replace the terrible lies in her head that she was worth nothing with the truth. And that was that God loved her. He accepted her no matter the circumstances. Now, weight preoccupation encompasses a variety of topics, including dieting, body image, eating disorders, other obsession tendencies with weight and food. Fact check regarding body image. Bodies come in all different types, shapes and sizes. Your appearance does not define you. Number two, your body will change throughout life. I'm turning 50 this year. Believe me, your body changes throughout life. And you are who you are. And you are who you were created to be. Dieting is futile. An often harmful process of restricting eating, usually caused by body dissatisfaction, preoccupation with thinness, and the false belief that self-worth is dependent on your body size. But dieting forces your body into a starvation mode. It's not healthy. You can do damage to your body organs. Unhealthy eating, or sorry, unlike healthy eating, 
which involves eating well-balanced snacks and well-balanced meals from a variety of foods that give us energy to carry out our daily activities. Dieting creates a physiologically driven preoccupation with food and can have devastating results, such as eating disorders, weight loss, surgery, and even suicide. The effects of dieting include irritability, anxiety, social withdrawal, as well as low self-esteem, especially when diets fail. Body image is a multidimensional concept and is defined as the picture we hold in our minds of our own bodies. It encompasses four dimensions, cognitive, affective, perceptual, and behavioral. Cognitive, what we think about our bodies. I think my hips are too wide. I th think my nose is too big. Affective, feelings that we have about our bodies. I feel ugly. I feel fat. Perceptual, how we visualize our bodies and minds. I see myself as having wide hips. I see myself having a big nose. Behavioral. The things that we do to try and alter our bodies, exercise, dieting, surgery. Now, there are a lot of factors that contribute to uh, the image of our bodies that we, we see in the mirror, what we see and believe that we, uh, that we have. Cultural ideas. The accepted ideal for women is to be thin and have a lean physique, but that's a physique that's, that's a body image that's hard to achieve and it's hard to maintain. Cultural pressure is placed on young women directly through parents or peers that encourage their daughters and friends to diet, to exercise. And they also, young women pick up uh, information from advertisements, from social media, from TV, promoting the beauty and weight loss industry. Pressure for girls to be thin is related to an increase in their body dissatisfaction. Cultural pressures to attain an ideal physique contribute to uh, dissatisfaction for males as well. The ideal body type is lean and muscular. College males who maintain a variety of negative emotions have body dissatisfaction. They view their bodies as an object and have lower esteem and are more prone to eating disorders. Now, the body dissatisfaction and weight concerns that many young, and women, young men and women experience can come from how much they internalize the culturally accepted ideals for their gender. Individuals who place a greater emphasis and commitment on appearance experience greater body dissatisfaction. Peer pressure, the need for social approval, can become another contributing factor to body image dissatisfaction. Bullying, appearances are very important to adolescents, especially to adolescent girls. Young girls often compare themselves to others and talk about their bodies, how much they weigh, how much they exercise, and what they do to stay thin. And research does indicate that peer and family criticism are directly related to body dissatisfaction. Mothers that put a lot of pressure on their child, on their female children, to be thin, to look pretty puts a lot of pressure on adolescents that eventually can turn into an eating disorder. Now, dissatisfaction with body image can lead to extreme measures for people to alter their size and shape in any means possible. And it may be harmful. Most of the time will be harmful. Anorexia nervosa is characterized by a person's refusal to maintain a minimal body weight and intense fear of gaining weight, a significant disturbance in the perception of the shape or size of his or her body, and in females, the lack of menstrual periods. Now, signs of anorexia 
include a dramatic weight loss for that individual. That individual has a preoccupation with weight, food, calories, fat content, and dieting. They refuse to eat certain foods. Individuals with anorexia will frequently comment about feeling fat or overweight, despite the weight loss. They experience anxiety over gaining weight and being fat. Individuals will also develop food and exercise rituals. They find consistent excuses to avoid mealtimes or any situations that involve food, and they withdraw from spending time with friends or family and participating in social activities. Bulimia nervosa is characterized by repeated episodes of binging or eating abnormally large amounts of food at one time, followed by behaviors designed to eliminate that food from the body, such as self-induced vomiting, fasting, excessive exercise, and laxatives. Evidence of binge eating, like the disappearance of a large amount of food in short periods of time, is a warning sign. Purging behaviors, people with bulimia will frequently make trips to the bathroom after meals, using laxatives or diuretics, putting their hands down their throats, or they follow extremely rigid exercise programs. Individuals suffering from bulimia may also have cuts on their hands and knuckles that are caused by their teeth scraping on the hand during purging. And they also may have discolored teeth and damage to the esophagus from multiple vomiting uh, instances. Binge eating disorder. I've talked a little about this before. This is a recognized eating disorder that is characterized by frequent episodes of uncontrolled overeating. Warning signs of binge eating include eating frequently in large quantities. Large quantities of food are missing at one time, after one, one meal. Feeling out of control and unstoppable, or unable to stop eating. Feeling out of control and unable to stop eating, they just keep going. Feeling uncomfortably full after eating. Feeling guilty and ashamed for binge eating. Individuals with binge eating disorder may also have failed at every diet that they have tried. They will be likely to be overweight or obese, and typically they eat for comfort and to avoid uncomfortable situations and to deal with their feelings. Anorexia athletica. This is compulsive exercising. Anorexia athletica is not a recognized diagnosis in the same way that anorexia, bulimia, or binge eating is, are, excuse me. Many people who are preoccupied with food and weight exercise compulsively to control weight in a misguided attempt to gain a sense of power, control, and self-respect. They spend more time in the gym than they do with their family or friends or sleep they exercise beyond the requirements for good health, and they have a fanatical obsession about weight and diet. People might miss work or school time and withdraw from relationships to exercise. Those who struggle with compulsive exercise typically focus on exercise as a challenge, as a job, and they forget that physical fitness can be fun. They define their self-worth in terms of their performance and are rarely satisfied with athletic achievements. Female athletic triad syndrome is the combination of three interrelated components associated with fitness training. It's caused by an energy imbalance, causes an individual to use more energy than you consume. They don't eat enough. They don't eat enough of the right foods. They exercise more than they need to. Now this disorder occurs mainly in female, well, in female athletes in high school, college, and elite athletes uh, within the United States. Symptoms of excess fatigue. Um, amenorrhea is the abnormal cycle or absence of menstruation and osteoporosis, which is a loss of bone mineral density and increases the chances of a bone fracture and this often irrever irreversible.
body dysmorphic disorder. Now, this is not an eating disorder per se, but as many characteristics of defining features related to other eating disorders. It is defined as a preoccupation with an imagined or slight defect in appearance that causes clinically significant distress or impairment in functioning and is not better accounted for by another disorder such as anorexia nervosa. Signs include frequently comparing one's appearance with others, repeatedly checking their, their appearance of a specific body part in the mirror, or wearing and or wearing excessive clothing, makeup hats to camouflage the perceived flaw. Individuals with this disorder will often have elaborate grooming rituals. They excessively research the perceived defect body part and even seek surgery or other medical treatment to fix the perceived defect. Muscle dysmorphia is a preoccupation with the idea that one's body is insufficiently lean or muscular. It is believed to be a subset of body dysmorphic disorder. It affects more men than women. Individuals perceive themselves as being too small when in actuality they're normal and incredibly muscular. As a result, they neglect family, friends, their job, school, and they decide to uh, attend to their, red, their rigid diet and exercise schedule um, in place of their social life. Warning signs include a constant need for affirmation of physical appearance. They need to be engaged in compulsive weightlifting or bodylifting routines, and they may take steroids or performance enhancing drugs to get bigger. So who is at risk for an eating disorder? Some people are vulnerable to getting an eating disorder because of their life circumstances. They're perfectionist. They're low self-esteem. They need a strong, a strong need for social approval, emphasis on thinness for their family, high anxiety levels, overweight as an adolescent, overprotective parents, and involved in a sport that requires thinness perfectionists and low self-esteem trying to reach society's perceived uh, ideal body type. It can put a lot of pressure on young individuals uh, that go to any means to achieve that body type. Now, what causes eating disorders? Sociocultural influences. So society glorifies thinness. It glorifies thinness and place value on, places value on achieving that perfect body. Through media, TV, movies, social media is a powerful influence predominantly portraying women who are thin. Family often pressure women to be thin, particularly in white and Hispanic populations. There are high levels of negative body talk amongst females of all ages. It's a competition. Who can be the prettiest? Who can be the thinnest? Psychological influences, a distorted body image. They look in the mirror and they don't see what is actually there. They see what they, they wanna see and they don't see what the true person is. Depression, depression from other life circumstances that combine to uh, push people to doing things that they wouldn't regularly do to, to reach the means that they want to. Perfectionism, perfectionism trying to be the Barbie doll, trying to be the big, uh, muscle-bound uh, stud, for lack of better terms, and low self-esteem, not feeling good about yourself. So some people like the binge eating. They will eat for comfort and they'll keep eating because it makes them feel good. But then after they're done, they feel horrible. And it's just a, 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 a horrible pattern uh, that will continue if they don't seek help. 
genetic influences on eating disorders. Studies do show that there are some evidence that eating disorders are transmitted genetically. Some families are just more predisposed to eating disorders than other families. Uh, through family influences, uh, talked about genetics, uh, praising thinness, uh, somebody in the family, a female, might be trying to, you know, trying to make her parents happy by exercising, not eating, and the parents or the family praise her for what she's achieved, and what they don't know is how she's achieving it. So they praise the weight loss so that. Uh, just reinforces the girl's, uh, the way she's trying to achieve that weight loss. She just keeps doing it. She gets um, praised for it and she just, the, the, the cycle continues. Um, parents or family can be overly protective uh, and intimidating. Mothers show infatuation with weight concerns for themselves and that brushes off onto their child, onto their daughter. Uh, a mother that may have an eating disorder will often feed her children irregularly. They'll use food as a reward and punishment and express concern over their daughter's weight, putting too much, too much stock in what their weight is and their body image when it really what it means is what's inside that person is what counts. And family influences, controlling parents, preoccupation with weight and gain, conflict in the family, um, family that's fighting that doesn't get along will put pressure on adolescents and they seek food as a comfort or they seek exercise, something to give them a release and deal with the stress. Recovery uh, from an eating disorder. Now, treatments for eating disorders must be designed on an individual basis because everyone's situation is different. Recovery, recovery is long and uh, a hard process. The process begins with evaluation by a doctor or trained counselor. Other disorders often coexist with the eating disorder and require comprehensive intervention combined with healthy living education. If somebody has anorexia nervosa, they may have other complications because of that uh, anorexia. They may have organ, um, I, something, something wrong with their, their, their body parts, uh, uh, their organs may be damaged. Um, that's something that they would have to address by a doctor. Uh, treatment does need to be tailored to help the patient both mentally and physically. It's just not a physically um, issue that has to be resolved. It's also mentally, it's the mental state that has, had put them uh, into that, that troubled time. Options for treating disorders um, physically include hospitalization to prevent death, suicide, and medical crisis, weight restoration through improved uh, health, mood, cognitive fun functioning, and healthy diet, uh, medication to relieve depression and anxiety, dental work to repair any damage and to minimize future problems, family counseling to change old patterns and create healthier new ones, group counseling to learn how to manage relationships effectively and talk to others that are dealing with the same issues that you might be, nutritional counseling to expose food myths and design healthy food patterns, Participa participation in support groups uh, to break down the isolation and alienation. Talking with others that have the same problem as you do. You can compare and learn and grow together. Eating disorders and preoccupation with weight are serious and sometimes life-threatening. Our body proportions are on a range where some are tall while others are short. Some of us have narrow frames, while other of us have wider frames. There's nothing we can do about our genetic makeup. What we can do is choose a healthy living that empowers us to easily run or walk long distances as we enjoy, 
celebrate and care for the magnificent world that God has placed us on. Illness often requires a physician. If we break a bone, an orthopedic specialist will have to repair it. Likewise, if our mental health is broken, a mental health specialist may be able to help us. It's a good thing to seek help for healing when we are broken. Now there is help on campus, on-site counseling program is uh, a service that is available to all FPU students and community members. If you are having issues, if you need to talk to somebody, the phone number is there, send an email and they will get you in touch with somebody that will listen to you and talk to you.